Welcome to the Cinema Your Preview Show. This week we'll be reviewing Tyler Neeson's a Michael Schwartz comedy drama, The Peanut Butter Falcon. There's sheep in this world, and there are wolves in this world. And I know that you two boys are just two weary travelers who lost your way. So, we're gonna clean you up right with a baptism. I'm more of a baptism by fire type. Okay. Come to my wrestling school and become a badass. That's what he wants to do with the rest of his life. Yes, it is. You let a half-naked boy with Down syndrome just slip out from under your nose. You two are close. We are. Well, then you'll bring him back. Are you following me? Maybe we could be friends. Have a good time. She got wrestling schools in Aiden? Yeah. One long road leads all the way down. I'll drop you there, then. I'm looking for a missing person. Have you seen him? Met your girlfriend back there, Eleanor. Two bandits on the run. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah. Rule number one, don't slow me down. Rule number two, I'm in charge. Hey, what's rule number one? Party. No, not party. Get it! You have a young boy with Down syndrome in the middle of nowhere. We've been doing something called living. Oh, man! I made a promise to him to give him that wrestling school in eight. No. Hey, Eleanor, I don't want to go home. Oh, oh! We could be a family. Friends are the family you choose. Wrestlers got alter egos. You need a name. Peanut Butter Falcon! What do our young Cinemagic reviewers think? Hi, I'm Cara McKernan. In this edition of the Cinemagic Preview Show, I'll be reviewing Peanut Butter Falcon. Peanut Butter Falcon is about a guy called Sack, who's played by Sack Gossagen, who has Down syndrome and he escapes from his residential nursing home to achieve his dreams of becoming a pro wrestler. Along the way, he meets Tyler, an outlaw who's played by Shia LaBeouf, who helps him achieve his dreams by becoming his coach. In my opinion, the film falls under adventure slash comedy. It is also wholeheartedly good in all its own ways. I love the chemistry between Shia LaBeouf and Zach Goss Asian's characters on screen. It really is the perfect definition of a bromance. And also another thing that I really enjoyed was the leading lady's performance from Dakota Johnson. I think this is one of her best performances yet. The only thing I disliked about the film would have to be the dialogue. The dialogue went on too long and also it was too much of it. i rather they say less and show more. The locations of the film really did convey Southern America and the costumes really did help drive that home for me. I would say the target audience for the film is definitely family friendly, but however, the film is rated at a 12A. I would give Peter Butter Falcon definitely 4 out of 5 stars for its feel good themes and the smile that I put on my face at the end. My name is John McGuire and the film I was asked to view was The Peanut Butter Falcon. I was impressed by Zach Gutsagan and felt it was an entirely appropriate casting of a talented actor. However, unlike most people, I did not love this film. I found the repeated use of symbolism to be heavy handed and obvious and at, cer and at certain points it felt like someone with a loudspeaker was screaming at me just to make sure I was noticing how clever they were being. Shia LaBeouf showed a sacrifice, death and resurrection but I never really felt that they worked or clicked in the story. On the one hand, it was a buddy flick with two drifters then a fairly irrelevant romance was haphazardly bolted on, which for me really did not add much to the story. I also thought the script didn't hold up, it felt calculated with too many plot lines not followed through and lots of unnecessary scenes that didn't help further the story. The film, however, is held up by great central performances from Zach Gottsagen, Shia LaBeouf and Dakota Johnson. I think the reason this film was got such high praise was because of the casting of Zach Gottsagen as he has Down Syndrome. Fair play to the people who made that casting choice, but I'd like to have seen him be given a better script to work with. I couldn't help comparing this film to Taika Waititi's Hunt for the Wilder People, a film that deals with a similar story but does so magnificently, unlike Peanut Butter Falcon. In spite of the many flaws, the film is enjoyable for a first time watch thanks to the actors but diminishes under critical analysis. For that reason, I would give this film 3 out of 5. My name is Sophie and this is the Cinemagic Preview Show. My review is on The Peanut Butter Falcon by Tyler Nilsson and Michael Schwartz. For me, the film falls in the category of the adventure and comedy. Some of the comedy moments within the film do have a slightly more adult nature to them, so I would say the film is aimed at audience members who are aged 15 and above. And I think people who would enjoy this film the most are those who are fans of films like Hunt for the Wilder People and Little Miss Sunshine. 
One of my favourite elements within the film is the development of the relationship between Zack and Tyler. They develop this unbreakable bond throughout the duration of the film and I think the pinnacle of this is when Eleanor, Zack's carer from the home, tries to take him home and the moment is twinged with such a sadness as it seems that the boy's journey is coming to an end. I think another moment in the film which is really great is the pacing of it. Uh, that coupled with the beautiful soundtrack and wonderful shots of the southern American scenery is really really beautiful and although the film doesn't really overtly use any CGI except from in the wrestling scene I think this is to its advantage as it kind of lets the natural beauty of the world kind of come through and it grounds it more in a reality which I think makes it a lot more successful. And I think another key moment within the film or a key use within the film is the comedy aspect which is used throughout and the tone of this is established very early on within the piece as Zach attempts to break free from the care home and moments later he is rugby tackled by one of the carers. Moments like these really help to diffuse tension and sadness all the way throughout the film, especially when Tyler is pleading with Eleanor not to take Zach back home as they have not met his hero yet and a cut to a wide shot shows Zach throwing Eleanor's keys straight into the sea. However, the use of comedy is also inverted, particularly at the end of the film, where the lack of comedy packs a larger emotional punch for the audience. Although I really enjoyed the film, I think one of the downsides to it was the use of Tyler's backstory. Throughout the film, we are shown happier times in his life in little glimmers, and there is an inference of a trauma as well. However, I don't really see how this trauma kind of plays through into his present day character um, and I think that is a weakness of the screenplay. Um, but overall, I did really enjoy the film and despite its shortcoming of the sum of the screenwriting of the character, I am going to give the film 4 out of 5 stars. Our industry corner guest this week is Academy Award nominated sound mixer, Peter Devlin. My first big break was really getting the opportunity to join the BBC in Belfast. I joined in 1981 and was a trainee audio assistant working in radio and television so that was uh, the most amazing opportunity and had a great time working in Belfast. A typical day on set for a production mixer is you've got an early start and you're working at least uh, 12, 12 and a half hour day, 30 minutes for lunch and in television you're trying to achieve at least uh, seven, eight, sometimes up to ten pages of dialogue and on feature films you're normally doing maybe two or three pages a day. A film like uh, Black Panther, we shot that over the course of I think 75 days uh, working in the television series Picard uh, with Patrick Stewart. Uh, we would do a one-hour episode in ten days. So different, different pace um, and also you don't get as many takes in television. One of the greatest experiences I've had was working on the J.J. Abrahams film Star Trek. As a kid in Belfast I used to love watching the television series with William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy. So when the film was rebooted in 2008 with uh, Chris Pine and Zachary Quinto and Zoe Saldana that was amazing to be a part of that and also to meet Leonard Nimoy and record him as Spock. So I think that Star Trek was definitely up there as one of my most favorite films to be, to be a part of. We're in a challenging time at the moment with COVID-19 but I believe the future is going to be bright and will continue to be bright for those wanting to find a career in this industry. There's always going to be a need for content, more than ever now, and I certainly hope that theatres will open and we will still get to experience that big screen experience. So my advice to those that want to get into the, the industry and to get in particular into production sound, watch films, listen to films, and also 
you know, be a part of an organization like Cinemagic and take that to the next level. If you want to go on to university and study film, but the most important thing is to love film, to watch films, and uh, you know, good luck. My name is Peter Devlin, and I'm a production sound mixer. And this is the Cinemagic Preview Show. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.